Henry's Near Deja Vu Written by KaneFan701 Read and adapted for audio by TARDIS9 Months had passed since the wreck of the Sodor was rediscovered and had a memory plaque placed on her bow. But nonetheless, Thomas and Percy still keep the memory of her and the lost souls of those who died and survived deep in their thoughts. As the winter season approached the time for people to prepare for the Christmas holidays, the weather had been dull and slightly rainy. It eventually let up and showed bright sunshine. The trains were still running at a slow pace, but that could not be helped. In the days after the gale force storm that struck the railway, maintenance work had to be carried out, mostly on the coastal line. Thomas, Percy, Duck, Toby, Rosie and other smaller engines were still allowed to run on the line as it could withstand their weight. But when they had to pick up passengers or freights, the bigger engines had to use different routes to find their way around. Sometimes a long run was a good chance for either Gordon or Henry to stretch their legs and let off some steam, but they would at times complain that the longer routes would make them late. Edward and James were two of the few tender engines that could still go on the coastal route. They were just the right size for it, they were just the right size for it, and found no issues with it whatsoever. One evening in the sheds, Henry was in a bad mood. Because he had to use one of the longer routes, a series of signals had caused him to stop and run late. The fat controller had tried to convince him that some of the signals had failed to work properly, but he wasn't convinced and blamed it on the track maintenance work. The sooner the maintenance work is completed, the better, Henry said crossly. It can't be helped, Duck said. That storm did big damage to our railway, and the coastal route suffered the most. He's right, added Boko. None of us bigger locos can use it until then. But Edward and James use it, Henry replied. That seems to be somewhat unfair. We're not as big as you or Gordon, James said. That's why... Henry wanted to continue debating about this, but decided not to. If he did, the other engines would be talking all night long until the next day, and that would certainly make the fat control across. The following day, Molly was running light to Brendan Docks to pick up some empty milk tankers to take to Knapford, where Thomas was then to take them to the dairy on his branch line to be filled up with milk and then take them back to Knapford. On the way, she saw Henry still going on about the maintenance work on the coastal route and being held up by another group of signals, this time because a new signalman was not familiar with the switch controls while taking the longer route. Molly arrived at Brendan Docks just as Edward finished shunting some vans full of flour into place for Toby to take to the soda flour mill. Hello Molly, smiled the old engine. Hi Edward replied Molly. Have you seen the mood Henry's in? <laughs> He's really going on about the maintenance work on the coastal route. Oh, is he? Edward said. Yes, said Molly. I overheard him. I've never heard this side of him. And nor have I heard him complain before. And what's all this about overhearing me? Henry said, interrupting them as he pulled up crossly alongside. You're bickering about the coastal route, Edward said. It can't be helped. It will be crazy of either you or Gordon to ever cross it, for the line would not be able to withstand your weight due to its current condition. Henry scoffed in reply. <laughs> bah! That's just a load of rubbish. Why, I'd even dare myself to cross it to prove that it can hold up my weight. Thomas then puffed in, overhearing the commotion. Cut it out, Henry. He said, Haven't you forgotten about the time when he took the flying kipper and went into the sea after not paying attention to the warnings? Henry's eyes widened and he got even crosser now that his past accident with the flying kipper had been brought up. Why, of course not! He reached out. 
That was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. <laughs> Even when I was called a green whale and a green monster. Oh, those dreadful memories. <laughs> Molly couldn't help but giggle. But Thomas took that seriously, for it had brought back memories of an accident from long ago that was similar to the one Henry had. The subject of Henry's mishap has reminded me of one engine who, like Henry himself, ran into the sea. But... <sighs> it was a lot worse. And so, the little engine began his story. It was 1922, just a few months before Henry arrived on Sodor. Edward and I were both still young and had much more to learn, but we had both grown a bit wiser and helped other younger engines who came over to either visit us or to be part of the railway. The other railway sent over an engine, an LNER Gresley Class A1. Me and Edward never knew his name or his number. He kept himself to himself. The only time we ever saw him was when he was taking passengers on railway tours from Sodor to the mainland. One night, he was to take the Midnight Express from the docks to the other railway. The weather conditions that night were dead calm, but it was said to rain later on. The locomotive steamed along the line and made good progress. But as he ventured on, he was accidentally diverted onto the coastal route, which was undergoing track maintenance at the time due to high tides. As he reached the coastal track, the rain came down, pouring hard. Then suddenly, as he rounded the curve, his driver saw the maintenance work with a red flag and red tail lamp shining to warn others. He applied the brakes, but it was too late, and the locomotive, skidding on the wet rails, ran right into the sea. He sunk instantly, along with his crew. The two front passenger coaches went as well, but the remaining ones at the rear stayed upright. The third coach half submerged in the water. <sighs> it was a terrible loss. Most of the bodies had been drowned, including the driver and fireman, but their bodies were found on the shore days later. The LNER Gresley Class A1 was never found again, but many a workman will tell you that when the date of the accident comes, they have seen him trying to cross the coastal track. <sighs> but he never reaches the other side. And with that, Thomas finished his story and took a deep breath. He looked over at Edward and Molly, who were gazing at him in awe. <laughs> I refuse to believe it, little Thomas, <laughs> snorted Henry. Now, if you don't mind, I've got some work to do. Goodbye. Molly and Thomas looked at each other as Edward sighed. <sighs> Sometimes those big engines can get too above themselves, he muttered as he steamed quietly away. Later that afternoon, the weather became dull and began to rain. Weather reports said it was going to be this way for a few days. Henry didn't mind the rain, not when it was spitting or falling lightly but he hated the heavy rain. Now it was mostly said that Henry disliked the wet weather, even when it was dull, for it made him upset and moody. When nightfall came, he was to take the flying kipper. Despite the many accidents that he had had with it in the past, this was Henry's most favorite job of all. As the rain continued to fall lightly, he waited to leave. Minutes later, the guard blew his whistle. Henry pulled away with his heavy train. When he left the docks, he started to pick up speed and roared past the signal box. The signalman didn't even notice this until it was too late. Oh no, he cried. I've left the line switched to the coastal run. By the time he picked up the telephone to call the maintenance gang, Henry was far away in a cloud of steam. He soon noticed that the line he was on led him to the quickest route, and he remembered that he had said to Thomas, Edward and Molly that he'd dare to try and cross the coastal route. 
<laughs> he said, sniggering. <laughs> I'll soon make up for lost time when I cross that line. Well, and I'll prove to Thomas, Edward, and Molly that it can stand my way too. <laughs> but when Henry reached the coastal track, his hopes for a fast run were dashed. The rain was starting to pound down hard, and fog rolled in out of nowhere. Oh, darn it, Henry said. Now I'm going to get soaked, and I can't see a thing. Further down the line, the maintenance work was still being carried out. But the workmen were having a break. Then they heard Henry's whistle. He was getting closer and closer to them. The workmen ran like hell as they put up a series of red lamps to warn the big green engine. Henry was travelling blind as the fog floated thickly around him and the rain pelted down hard on him. Then, in the mist, he heard the sound of another engine's whistle. One that sounded unfamiliar to him. As he rounded the curve, he saw something that made him gasp out in terror. Stop! Stop! he wailed. There's another engine in front of me. His driver shut off steam and applied the brakes hard on. Henry closed his eyes, fearing he was going to crash into the locomotive in front of him. As he came to a stop, Henry opened his eyes. To his horror, the engine he saw had disappeared. As he looked around, he saw the series of red warning lamps. Then he gasped out again. <gasps> Henry saw just how close he and the flying kipper had come to another disaster. He was ten feet away from the rails that had been damaged by the high tides. Henry then saw the workmen coming up towards him. They were glad to see he was okay, but were not pleased that he was on the line. What are you doing here? They said. It's dangerous for big engines like you to be on this line. Look at how close you came. You could have caused a fatal accident. Henry was still feeling shocked by what he had gone through. He told the workmen that he had seen another engine on the same track he was on and that it had vanished when he nearly hit it. The workmen all scratched their heads in confusion. Henry couldn't explain any better and gave up remaining silent for the rest of the night. The next day, the weather had improved. James took the flying kipper back to the docks where he would take charge of it. Henry returned, running light. He kept on thinking about his experience last night. He then remembered about Thomas's story. What if... What if it was that Eleniart Gresley Class A1 that I saw? He asked himself. It had to have been him. When Henry arrived back at the docks, the fat controller was waiting for him. He was very disappointed in him. I'm very cross with you, Henry. You knew it was dangerous for a big engine like you to cross the coastal run while it was under repair. Not only that, but you left in poor weather conditions and almost ended up in the sea like you did last time. As a punishment, you can stay in your shed for a week. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Henry sighed sadly. All the next week in the shed, Henry was still thinking about what had happened. Thomas was in the shed too. The little blue engine had boiler ache and was waiting to be taken to the works. Thomas, Henry said, you told me about that LNER Gresley Class A1 and that tragic accident a long time ago. Well, I now believe you. I think I saw it on that night when I almost repeated my accident. I see, Eve changed your tone Thomas said feeling the aching in his boiler as the workmen were checking him out you must have seen his spirit I guess you're very lucky that he saved you <sighs> maybe 
maybe you're right, Henry replied. It must have been him that prevented me from crashing. The big green engine sighed almost in a guilty way. <sighs> Nowadays, Henry always follows the rules when there are repairs going on the line. But he has never forgotten about his encounter with the ghost that saved his life. The ghost of the LNER Gresley Class A1.